this event and, and, and something else that may or may not be related. But the, uh, on the event, uh, on, the, on these voluntary national reviews, is, is, uh, maybe I should know, but is, I know that, like, for example, in Universal Periodic Review in Human Rights in Geneva, there's a provision for sort of shadow reports or, mm -hmm. or, or you know, civil society to, to chime in if they feel differently. Is there any provision for that? Here, and the second one just had to do with, I saw your quote uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago about the, the junior professional officers program. You were asked about DPRK having a JPO, mm -hmm. and I've since asked the spokesman. And I just wanted to be, you seem to say, you know, category, I mean, which is, I guess, is the, is the fact that every country has a right to participate as much as any other country. And the spokesman seemed to say that there's, that the, the, the UN has certain requirements and it's very much up to departments to choose where to put people. Do you, I guess I wanted to know if, and I don't just mean DPRK, it could be any country, let's say, that's subject to sanctions. Do you believe that it is their right to work in DPA in, in SCAD or any other division that may work on that, or would there be some kind of D DPA review of that? I just wanted to ask you to amplify, I guess, what you'd said uh, about the Junior Professional Officers Program with regard to DPRK. Thanks a lot. Well, uh, thank you very much uh, for raising the question. I'll take your last question first. Uh, I, I said uh, that uh, each member of the United Nations is entitled to apply for a JPO post, uh, subject to the needs to be identified by the specific department. Um, this is the uh, fact. Um, I do not see any of the member states in the United Nations has de been deprived of this right. Uh, although some countries are uh, really under sanctions, but this is not spe specifically mentioned. As for the, um, the specific procedures, I, I just returned from <laughs> Hamburg G20. Uh, I do not have the latest information on that, but it depends on the need for JPO. Uh, that will be identified by, by the specific department. Thank you. Thanks. And, and the second question about, about uh, the, uh, the review, the contents. Uh, normally, um, they will concentrate on the goals and targets identified. So that's why the member states would have three years in succession to, to see that they will concentrate on one third of the goals. And ha having said that, I would say that the member states in uh, explaining or representing themselves, they would uh, have their country specific conditions in mind. So they may have a different approach. You know, some countries will um, put more emphasis on eradication poverty, others may, may be on health, on gender equality. Um, th this is really uh, a matter up to them to, to decide. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sherwin. Under Secretary General, on behalf of the UN Correspondents Association, thanks for this briefing. Uh, Sherwin Bryceby, South African Broadcasting. The, the theme of this, this meeting is to look at the successes and the challenges. I mean, can we really talk about successes? Uh, thanks. I wanted to, to um, I, looked, I was looking at sdgbusinessforum.com, and I just wanted to, maybe I'm missing it, but is there some way, or when the, when the date arrives, will there be like a list of the, of the businesses, of the participants, it said register, but it didn't have like a list. I just if you can say a little bit more about the forum. I also did want to thank you on behalf of the Free UN Coalition for Access, and I wanted to ask you, just on the first question about the voluntary national reviews. I understand that you're saying it's up to countries to decide which, which road to take. I wanted to know more about civil society participation. I mean, I saw a photo over the weekend of there are definitely civil society coming to participate in it. Yeah. But is there some formal way for them to want to for them to weigh in? Maybe make suggestions, maybe make criticisms, of what of, of their country's own report, if they think some part of it maybe is, is less than true or, you know, in the same way that the Universal Periodic Review allows for kind of external, or at least there are external submissions. Well, uh, uh, the first about the a partnership um, forum, uh, it is organized by DESA and the United Nations, uh, UNOP, and also um, uh, the International Business Council. Um, we were really touched at the number of uh, uh, private sectors uh, are increasing dramatically. Um, we don't know by the end of the day how many of them, but the enthusiasm to get involved from a business point of view to support the implementation of Agenda 2030 is really encouraging. I think you will have them uh, on website, uh, the specific participants, 
uh, who are who they are, and I hope that will be a strong driver of development in the, in the future. And the the about the uh, sorry, well, yes. the voluntary national yeah. whether the civil society can formally chime yeah. in on their countries. Uh, I'm still thinking about North Korea. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I, re I remember you, you, you said in your uh, news report that Wu says yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's why I wanted to, I'm glad to get the opportunity to ask you. Okay. Um, the civil society has been involved and will be involved in the entire process. This morning at the opening, we had a civil society uh, representatives speaking at the opening session. So they will be either get involved for discussions directly or listen to the discussions in the overflow rooms. What is more, they will participate in more than 120 side events, many of them inviting the civil um, society representatives and the business sectors to be their keynote speakers. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Mr. Wu, thank you. Thanks. Good luck next week, uh, this week. Yeah?